Hi, my name is Amin and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a high quality book cover like this one for KDP. Now like I mentioned previously, you don't want to copy my cover or anyone else's cover like the ones you see on Amazon here. You want to make sure that you come up with your own designs, your own cover. Um, it's okay to take inspiration but it's definitely not right to copy somebody else. So just make sure that you come up with your own designs that are unique and not similar to anyone else. And in order to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need a vector editing software such as Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. And these are paid software, so if you don't have access to them, you might want to use something free such as Canva or Inkscape. So for this particular cover, I'm going to use graphics that I found on Vecteasy.com and Freepik. Both of these require paid subscriptions and um, if you don't want to pay for them, they both also have free versions you can use, but um, you need to provide attribution to the creators of the graphics. Okay, so what you want to do now is open up Adobe Illustrator. I'm just going to say Adobe Illustrator because that's the software that I'm using. And then you want to click on Create New. I'm just going to rename it to Weather Journal Cover. I'm just going to resize it to 7 times 10 inches because that's the size that my cover is going to be. And then over here, I'm just going to leave it as RGB. I'm going to make sure that it's high over here with 300 PPI. And then I'm just going to click on create. So as you can see, I have my artboard. This is going to be my cover. The next thing you're going to need is some sort of inspiration because it's extremely difficult to just sit down with a blank canvas in front of you and to come up with ideas. So you're going to have to look for some sort of inspiration. So what I like to do is I start off by searching on Amazon for other similar covers to find some sort of inspiration. So if you have a look here, you know, you might find something that sparks some ideas in your head. And like I mentioned, you don't want to copy any of these. You're just looking for ideas. One thing I like to do is go to either Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk and search for the niche that I'm creating a book cover for. And then over here, just sort it by new arrivals and you'll be able to find a lot of covers you can take inspiration from like this one here uh, it looks pretty decent it might inspire you to create something similar with trees and a um, couple of people holding an umbrella or something similar the next thing i'm going to do is i've gone over to vecteasy.com and i found the graphics that i want to use for my cover so i'm just going to download it and once it's downloaded, you can just open it up using Adobe Illustrator or whatever software you're using. Okay, so as you can see, I have my graphics or uh, background pattern in this instance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to group this one and this one together so that when I move one of them, they both move. So what I'm going to do is just select them and then click on object and then group. Now you can see that when I try to move it, both the pattern and the background color move together. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just copy this onto my cover. So I'm going to click on edit, copy, and then go over to my cover tab and then edit and then paste. So I'm just going to resize this to the size of my cover. So holding down shift on my keyboard, I'm just going to resize this. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove all of this excess parts from the pattern. The way to do this is I'm going to click on this rectangle tool here and create a rough rectangle. And then over here, I'm going to select the size as seven times nine inches and then click enter. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that it's selected. And then over here where it says align, I'm going to click on horizontal align center and then vertical align center actually the height's supposed to be 10 inches so i'm just going to fix that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to select both of them both the rectangle and the pattern and then i'm going to click on object clipping mask and then make so as you can see it's tidied up now um, there's no excess bits on the edges so the next thing i want is some sort of um, either a rectangle or something I can put here where I can put the text weather journal over it so I've decided that I'm going to download a cloud and I'm going to download it from this website freepick.com now each of these websites they all have their own 
licenses and what you can do and what you can't do with the designs so you're going to have to read through them and make sure that you abide by whatever rules these websites have so i'm just going to download this you can also download something similar from vecteezy or you know other websites as well so once that's downloaded i'm just going to open it once again using adobe illustrator and then you can see that i have all these clouds which i can use i can choose to use any of these shapes now the issue is you can see that they're all grouped together so i'm just going to click on it go to object and then ungroup so now this allows me to move them individually instead of as a whole group so i've decided that i'm going to use this one as my cloud so i'm just going to copy this by clicking on command c on my mac and then i'm going to head over to my cover and then command v to paste i'm just going to resize this to make it bigger okay so i'm going to place my text on top of this weather journal but before i do this i'm going to add some stroke onto it so the way to add stroke is a stroke is basically just an outline around this so i'm going to add a stroke and the way to do this is i'm going to click on this little box here where it says stroke and then for now i'm just going to select any random color and then over here i'm going to increase the weight the size of the stroke to something that's bigger so this size seems okay to me and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the color to match a color that's already on the pattern so i kind of like this pink color so i'm just going to use this as my stroke so what i've done is i've clicked on this eyedropper tool and i'm just going to get a sample of this color so you can see that there's a sample of this color here where it says fill so i'm just going to double click this and then copy this code and then click on ok i'm going to select the cloud and then this time i'm not going to click on fill i'm going to click on stroke double click it and then i'm going to paste the code and as you can see i've changed the color of the stroke to this pink it's exactly the same color okay so the next thing i'm going to do is add my text and that's going to be weather journal for kids so i'm just going to resize this and then change this to weather journal weather and then i'm just going to copy this by clicking on option on my keyboard and then just moving it down and then over here i'm just going to change it to journal now i'm just going to center both of these so i'm going to go over here and click on align and then align to keyboard and then horizontal align center and using the arrows on my keyboard i'm just going to move it down a little bit the next thing i'm going to do is change the font so i've already decided that i'm going to use um, a font by the name of weather the font is called weather so i'm just going to type in weather and it's like a kids font and you can download this font yourself if you want to from creative fabrica i'll leave a link down in the description below okay so i'm just going to resize this to make it bigger and then place it in the center so an issue with this font is you can see that it's fairly thin and there's no real bold version that's available so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a bit of stroke to make it more bold so the way to do this is you want to select the text and then click on this stroke box over here and you just you, and you just want to increase the stroke so i'm just going to increase it a little bit by clicking on the arrows over here where it says stroke weight and you just want to play around with it until you find something that looks suitable for the cover so i think for me a uh, two point size is perfect okay so once that's done you want to change the color of this you know leaving it black it just seems a bit bland so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select a color from the pattern once again so i'm going to click on this eyedropper tool here and i'm going to use this red color as the color for my text so as you can see that the red color has been selected over here so i'm just going to double click this copy the color code click on ok and then head over to my text selecting both of them i'm just going to paste the code over here and then the same with the stroke color as well 
so as you can see it looks better now it's more colorful it stands out and um, it makes it more appropriate for kids so over here I have my finished front cover so as you can see um, I've also added four kids over here and the color I've chosen is this one here from the rainbow this orange color the next thing I'm going to do is create a back cover and the way to do this is you want to click on document setup edit artboard and just duplicate this so I'm going to click on option holding option I'm just going to drag this to the side and this creates a duplicate cover which is going to be my back cover for the book so what I'm going to do now is just remove all of these elements besides the pattern so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of it and then I'm going to deselect the background pattern and then hit delete to remove everything else besides the pattern the next thing I'm going to do is download my cover template and as you can see I already have it on my desktop here so I'm just going to head back over to the cover file and then I'm going to click on file place I'm going to select the cover template and then click on place so I'm just going to place it over here uh, away from my front and back cover so the next thing you need is an artboard behind the cover template so you want to click on document setup edit artboard and then just click anywhere on top of the template and it creates an artboard so you just want to resize this to make sure that it's the exact size of the book cover so in my case it's 14.5 inches and this is correct 10.25 is correct the next thing I'm going to do is just lock this into place so that it doesn't move around when I bring my front and back cover over this so I'm going to click on this icon here where it says layers and then I'm just going to locate this template and then over here I'm just going to lock it into place so as you can see I can no longer select this I can't move it and it's not going to interfere with the next steps so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to group all of this together so I'm just going to select all of this and then click on object and then group the next thing I'm going to do is just copy this on top of the template so holding down the option button on my keyboard I'm just going to move this across and as you can see it appears behind the template I need it on top of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it I'm going to click on arrange and then bring to front and then I'm just going to align it into place so clicking on this one here horizontal align right vertical align top it aligns it into place and then all I have to do now is just to resize it to match the size of the template now I just need to do the same thing with the back cover so holding down the alt key I'm just going to move this across to create a copy so once again right click arrange and then bring to front but this time I'm going to click on this icon here horizontal align left and then same one vertical align top so once again I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so now what I need to do is I need to I need a spine on top of this so that it covers this gap so I'm going to click on the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle on top of it on top of the cover and then I'm just going to resize this to match the width of the spine which is 0 0.25 inches and then I'm going to click on enter the next thing I'm going to do is just align it into place so I'm going to click on horizontal align center and then vertical align center okay so I have my spine I'm just going to change the color of it to match one of the other colors so I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool here and then I'm just going to select this red here so my spine is going to be this color so I have my cover so I'm just going to group all of this together by selecting all of them and then object and then group the next thing I'm going to do is check if everything's in place so I've selected the cover and now I'm just going to change the opacity to 50% okay so there's an issue I've noticed here that the spine seems a little bit too big and the reason for this is because there's a stroke added onto it so I'm just going to remove the stroke now when I change the opacity to 50% you can see that it's the correct size okay so everything else looks fine you can see that the text and everything is aligned so I'm just going to restore the opacity back to a hundred percent and I'm just going to hide the template layer so I'm just going to click on this eye icon here 
so now this cover is complete so I'm just going to export it so I'm just going to click on file save as and then PDF and then I'm just going to select the artboard number which in my case is number six and then click on save so here it is I have my complete cover okay so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more content like this